What's good, everybody? What's good? Can you hear me? Let's, let me make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me, Boothang? Can you hear me? All right, all right. I was just making sure. Happy Easter, first of all, everybody. Feels like a weird Easter. Me and Boothang was just talking about it right before I came on. Like, this is like the weirdest Easter ever with the uh, quarantine and the and the, and the COVID-19 it's kind of crazy. Just don't feel like Easter. We didn't. Nobody did anything for what well, we didn't do anything. <laughs> we didn't do anything at all. Nothing. I felt like we really could do. Um, I couldn't really see anybody. So, it just felt weird, and even just felt like, you know, looking on Facebook and just the social media in general. I've seen people talking about it, but just not the same. Uh, but if you believe in God and those things, it will always be the same. But I'm just saying, as far as the holiday or how it's always celebrated. One thing I will say before we jump right into Tristan Hill, um, shout out to my son. He was actually born on Easter Sunday, so shout out to him. His birthday is actually Wednesday. He will be 19. That's my my youngest boy. I appreciate him, and I love him. Like my, my oldest, I was telling you all about, go check him out. Kid Columbus, he's got his new album out, Hot Nigga. Why well, I said Hot Nigga? White Nigga. <laughs> Thinking about Bobby, Sh- Thinking about Bobby Shimerda. But my youngest boy is getting ready to, you know, getting he's working up at Amazon right now, you know, doing his thing, getting ready to go to school. I'm um, going to go play basketball. I haven't decided what school he wants to go to as far as that. But we'll see. And uh, just want to wish him a happy birthday, early birthday, because he was born on Easter Sunday. First boy, my first boy was born on Friday the 13th. And my second boy was born on Easter Sunday. There you go. So. Donation, donation, donation. Remember, that's the Tourette's. Don't trip on that. But hey, let's let's talk about this dude, Tristan Hill. I got the title Dead Man Walking. The reason why I got that title was because if you checked out a show that me, Law Nation, Bobby Belt, and Jeff Cavanaugh did, Bobby Belt mentioned just said Tristan Hill, well, he's a dead man walking, and I just thought about that for a little bit. Dead man walking, Tristan Hill, man, they just throwing him away like that. I can get it and understand it. Um, you know. I was thinking to myself before I came live, like, if the Cowboys, and I had already said, if they were going after a Jamal Adams and were giving up a first-round pick and they wanted a defensive tackle, I wouldn't be mad if they said throw in Tristan Hill on that. I wouldn't be like, no, don't get rid of Tristan Hill. I wouldn't be like that. But I also am not opposed to saying, yes, keep Tristan Hill on the squad because you have a defensive tackle who basically is going to be like a rookie, really didn't get no work. We're going to see a, show a couple of clips and – how the Cowboys could get excited about Tristan Hill. I'm sure you may have seen it on other channels, but just a couple of things that I personally got excited about with Tristan Hill. And let's say he could be a dead man walking, but also he could be a guy that you can say, you know what? Hey, ho, Jawan Jones with the $10 holler on the cash app. And my guy, John Jones with the $5 holler. Appreciate y'all and love y'all for life. But, you get what I'm saying, y'all? Like, if you look at the depth on the team, I don't want to just jump up ahead because I know I get crazy. I start talking everywhere. But it, I just get excited because we shouldn't throw away Tristan Hill. I get it if you want to trade him and you say, hey, let's trade him and get like a person like a Jamal Adams or a dog and you want to throw him in. I get it. He's a young guy, but he's I believe he'll be an asset if you get his head together because that was his problem. I mean, and we look at Marinelli, he probably reached for two players. I don't want to th- – lump what happened with taco where marinelli drafting him or pounding the board for him to to seep onto him now i know he wasn't impressive i know he didn't he didn't he didn't do jack poo this year i know he was only on seven games let me get off of me let me just show me because i'm tired of y'all know you're probably tired of looking at me but we get it tristan hill seven games five tackles two quarterback hits played 11 percent of the snaps as a second round pick we get it we get it i understand it um, I can understand people being frustrated. I was frustrated, but I wasn't super frustrated. Um, I wanted him to get on the field more, but I kept, I, I felt like it was kind of one of them seasons where it wasn't going to matter anyway. This was just going to be a bad season. You could kind of feel it if you were a Cowboys fan. I don't know about you. When you were getting excited, I thought this would be a 12-14, and 14, but the longer you got in camp and you've seen the distractions once again with Ezekiel Elliott and all this stuff, he just kind of felt weird. And so as much as I wanted him to play toward the end of the season, I think he did show a little promise, although he wasn't getting a lot of games. We showed there was a couple clips where he did show promise, and I don't feel like he is a train wreck of a player. What are y'all thoughts right quick on him? And then we're going to – because 
I looked at the his measurables at the combine, and I know the combine isn't the oh, oh but a lot of these players that they have interviewed. They look at the combine, and they can move you up and down. If they already see you have the ability and you have a really good 40 time, that really may cement it for them. Um, if you do really good in the agility drills, you're a linebacker, maybe they want to see your uh, you know, twist and move and you don't have a pro day yet, this, this excites them in a combine. So when I was just looking at Marlon Davidson, who they brought in, Raekwon Davis, who they have brought in, Marlon Davidson's more of the defensive end type, even though his body type says 6'3", 303, he's more, you say the body, you can slide him inside and play a three or a five, but he's more of a five on the outside. He's more going to be of a rush in because he was standing up. And then you got Raekwon Davis, who is going to be inside. Is he going to be a one or a three? That's to be known. But when you look at their combine stats compared to Tristan Hill's, I mean, Chris Tristan Hill, if you threw him back in the combine, you threw him back in the draft this year, and he played under his coaching staff and played well, he probably would have still been a top defensive tackle. I mean, his combine numbers, they weren't bad at all. I was looking at him the other day. Six foot three, three oh eight. That's what he came in at five oh four in the in the in the forty, and that's still beating a lot of the top defensive tackles now. Uh Brown and Auburn, who didn't have the greatest combine, his numbers killed him. Derek Brown for at Auburn. His numbers are killing his numbers from last year. He also had 28 reps. Now, we said he needed to get stronger. We said that. He needs to get stronger, and you know he does. But 28 reps on the on 225 on the bench ain't bad because when I ma- matched him against some of the other top guys, his numbers were still high at 28 on the bench. 115 abroad was still one of the tops at the defensive tackle and defensive ends this year. Shuttle was at four three eight, good. Three cone was seven seven. Vertical inch, uh, vertical jump thirty five. Great measurables. And one of the things that they really liked about Tristan Hill was the quick first step. Can come off that line. Can rush. Can get pass. Has pass rush ability. But he had a quick first step. And if you get him in a good one on one matchup, that first step is prevalent. And you can see that. And we'll show a couple of highlights here. I keep on talking about it. But let me think about. Let me say because I haven't got to look in the comments. Let me jump in these comments right now. What do you guys kind of think about – I know he didn't play, but what are your feelings about him? Give him another chance or just throw him away? If you if you just throw him away in a trade or you say, you know what, let's, let's see what he has this year. Your thoughts on that before we talk about some things that's going to help him. And then we'll watch some highlights of him. B. Parker says they need to let him play. Mr. Antoine, Mr. Mr. Right, Antoine Myers says he's staying Rue Glock. I like him more than I like Justin Metabike, yes. And I see people saying they didn't like Tristan at 51, but they like Justin in the second. That's a great, great point, Rue Glock. That's a great point because I definitely like him more than Metabike. I was uh, high on my kind of Metabike when I saw his work, then I went back and watched more of his film. He looked very impressive at the Combine, but mm-mm. I'm I'm just kind of backed off on Meta BK, especially they're talking about a second round with him. Tristan Hill, I'm saying, is better than a Meta BK. KG still says he's a dead man walking period. We'll see. He's got a new staff, and here's some things I'm going to talk about right quick that's going to help him. The Lunatic says let him play under the new coaching staff and then let them make the decision. Stephen Arthur says they need to use him more. Eastside Harold says, keep him because Poe and McCoy will be hurt during the season. Ah, right, whatever. <laughs> Dre the Gray says, how many steps really? That's that's going to be the thing because I, I want to show y'all something, too. I got so much stuff to show y'all. Forgive me. I just got so much to show you, and I feel I don't want to rush it. Sometimes I feel like I'm rushed. I don't want to just talk your heads off. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking your heads off. But I want to talk about this. All right, so we just already seen the snaps. Not good, right? Not good, but like I saw, the combine measure is good, so I think you don't throw away a player like that. Now, let me show something here. This is what's going to help Tristan Hill, in my opinion. You got a Gerald McCoy who they brought in, okay, and we obviously know they brought in Gerald McCoy to play and play a lot. So, Gerald McCoy, you got Gerald McCoy, Tristan Hill, Justin Hamilton, Antoine Woods, Don Terrapo. Okay, now you got your one, your big boy, your fat boy, who you've been wanting, we've all been clamoring for in Poe. 
we got a solid, solid three tech now. You lost to Malik Collins, but you're definitely upgrading into Gerald McCoy. You're going to lose the years because Malik Collins is 26 and McCoy is 32. He signed a three-year deal. Now, here's the thing. He's the three, and Tristan Hill is the three as well. So he is going to be behind him. But I've seen KD Drummond, if you ever follow him on Twitter, he has kind of Alden Smith in that 4-3 playing some three-tech too because of that size because he's at 275 pounds. We'll see because you can still have your defensive end playing at 275. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, 275, 280, 290, you're not feeling bad at your defensive end playing that. So I still think they keep him at defensive end, in my opinion, and I think he works with McCoy. But the thing I think helps uh, Tristan Hill right now um, and we'll go into another thing that will help him, is Gerald McCoy. Because think about it. I want to show you something. And this is his his the scouting report on him, and it's telling because this is what was going on with him um, this season of, of why he was not playing because of the attitudes and the immaturity. But let, let me read a few things right here. Basically says, and this was the scouting report that they gave Hill at the Combine. Hill did not end his career at UCF on a positive note. He barely played in the team's Fiesta Bowl loss at LSU. He made it clear he was unhappy about his playing time at the end of the game and did not thank the team's current coaching staff in the note in which he made his declaration early in the NFL draft. Hmm. Now, here's the thing, and they said – but he had been in the doghouse through the 2018 season. This was his, his last season, and he left early his junior year, only starting once in 11 times, but still was one of his most productive years. Now, here's the thing that can help him. I'm going I'm to go through and show the negative of this uh, because this is what people were saying about him, and it manifested this season. But did he have anybody really on that defensive line to help him? Now, it says – He's the most talented and impactful defensive lineman on the team, but the concern over his football character and maturity has hindered his standing on the team at times. Despite, despite starting just once, Hill was a gap bandit, which that's what you love about him, his quickness, and he can shoot those gaps with that size. Very disruptive in those in the running lanes and those games, harassing quarterback, and he is consistent. We'll show that as well. Consistent effort and hustle. You'll see that in a couple clips. He needs to get stronger. We've seen that this year. That was true. And play with better control. We will also see that. But his get off and athletic hands and feet should make him a rotational one gapper if his maturity and coachability check out. Right? So that was the issue. Right? That was the problem. Okay? But here, the new coaching staff had a problem. I mean, the coaching staff that he had. He didn't like that coaching staff. Now, hey, you an NFL player, you don't matter who your coaching staff is. You got to go to work and make it happen. But his coach prior, Scott Frost, he had his most productive time under him. Okay, so that gives me some some happiness that maybe with the new staff, with the Tom Sula, with the Mike Nolan, with those guys, they can light a fire in them and a Gerald McCoy because, once again, when they had him, They drafted him. When you look along the defensive line, I want to ask y'all this, and I want y'all to answer me this. What's y'all feelings on this? On the defensive line, he already had maturity issues, right? Right, Boo Thang? He already had maturity issues. We've seen that. That was the red flag. Marinelli brought him in, pound the table for him. Who along the defensive line was going to be a mentor to him? Malik Collins was trying to get his, and he's gone this year, and we knew that. So he wasn't going to be the mentor to him because that was his job. Malik Collins was the three. He was coming in in the second-round draft pick, so he's coming to take your job. So he ain't trying to mentor him most likely, right? Antoine Woods, eh, I don't know if Antoine Woods was the leadership type, not hating Antoine, but maybe. But mm, Demarcus Lawrence was more of a, a talkative type, but I don't not the leader like a Gerald McCoy. And then you see Robert Robert Quinn, that was his first year there. No, Chris Covington, Hyder, Joe Jackson, any of those guys? No. Who was there to really put their hand over his shoulder or put him under their wing and say, this is how you be a professional? Right? Y'all tell me.
Exactly. Woods got him. Well, I'm not saying we got him in trouble, but you saw he got in trouble with sleeping, got fined, sent home, um, and Woods was the same guy. So, you know, that couldn't have been a good influence. It could have been smoking chronic too. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why he may have been lazy, smoking all that weed. You feel me? Because we, we're not going to say he didn't fly a fellow drug test, maybe because he knew when the test was coming he was smart on that tip. But I, I seen him up front. He looked like he smoked weed. I ain't hating. I'm just saying. Looked like it. He had that country look. Shouldn't, I don't want to say he do, so I want to put that on him. But, man. Mm. But anyway, now check this out. Now, I told you Gerald McCoy coming in now. Gerald McCoy starts now, right? Gerald McCoy is a whole different type of leader, all right? Gerald McCoy, when he comes to a team, he's leader all day. He was a leader at Tampa Bay. His short time at uh, Carolina, he was a leader. He's going to put his arm around him, I believe, because he's 32 years old now. He's not sitting there thinking, oh, man, I'm trying to play another 10 years. I feel like he's about to be the guy that puts his arm around him if they bring a Tristan Hill back. Because you don't have to reach to get a defensive tackle in the draft or get one early now because you still have a Tristan Hill if you want to use him. It's not like he's a bum talent. He's not a bum talent. So you have a defensive tackle who's young. He declared early, so he's only 21, 22 years old. So that's just like a good throwback for you. So you don't have to reach. If you don't get a, a Ken Law, I don't want a Metabike early, and I don't think he's going to be any different because I compared him to a Daniel Wise. Just keep looking at him. You get what I'm saying? A Leaky Fotu, maybe, but I want him to be the one one tech. I don't – a three tech? I, I want a, another one, another fat guy that back up a Poe because Poe may get injured because he did have coming off the groin surgery this past year. But I don't want to keep log jamming having three guys. And you and you have a McCoy there who's been – yes, he's had some injury issues, but he's been relatively healthy as well. And since 2012, I believe he's had five sacks and up. So I think he could be a great mentor to Hill, number one, a great mentor to Hill. And I believe Hill can learn under him slowly. And also – Another great hire was Rob Davis, okay? And I want to tell you why. Because this guy is going to get the locker room, and that's one of the reasons why uh, McCarthy brought him in. And I want you to listen to this because it was, it, was, it, was kind of, it was good, what I, what I want you all to hear. I think this is what's going to help a Tristan Hill as well. Get his maturity together. Because if they keep this kid and he gets his maturity together, that's only a benefit for the Cowboys. Why would you want to throw that damn talent away and you got somebody that can develop it? But check this out right here. You know the foundation is here with the players. You know, it's rich in history and tradition. And so we're looking forward to the Donation! Donation! Uh, I volunteer coach at that place uh, that we had spoke about, St. Norbert College. But I've been a life coach for a long time, and most of my post career has been around the life coaching space, trying to develop high performing teams, develop young men into being better men and better players. And so uh, we're going to start there uh, under Mike's system. The, the locker room is the most important room in the building. No disrespect to any other offices, but he wants to make sure that the locker room is performing at a high level. And so we're going to start there and build out. Can there be some player program stuff, some coaching, some administration stuff? All encompassing. Uh, we're going to work with Brian Wansley in his player development space and with Todd and uh, Will McCray. And so we're going to work around all areas that touch the football program. Uh, and so we're looking forward to doing that. What characteristics best define Mike McCarthy as a, as a coach? Well, Mike's the tough people. He's a, he's a player's coach. Um, he wants the best out of the players. He's very demanding. Uh, he, wants, he wants you to pay attention to details. He wants you to be responsible, accountable, disciplined, smart, tough, all those things. And uh, I think players enjoy playing for him. Um, he's not the type of guy that's going to beat you down every day, but you understand your expectations of what he expects from you. And so that part of it, I think, will be consistent. And he was able to do that in Green Bay when we were together. And I look forward to him doing that down here. What skills as a life coach will you use to get the best work out of the players in the coaching? Well, first of all, it's all about relationships. Uh, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so we want to try to you know, individually this meet each of those team, men, huh? talk a little bit about their professional and personal think? expectations, like and then just try to help them reach their goals. Uh, you know, we walk into this league as young men, hope to leave as older men, uh, and, and everybody has a path to trace. Uh, most guys show up knowing how to play football. They've just never been professional football players, and so we want to talk about 
the professionalism that it takes to be an NFL football player, the history and tradition that you guys have down here, and to try to bring a championship. I think that's, you know, the expectations are similar to Green Bay, right? They want to win championships first and foremost, and so I, I appreciate being a part of that. Can you talk about how you see maybe some of the evolution of players that you've worked I like that. I don't know about y'all, but I like that. I, I like somebody talking like that. And he's the assistant head coach. That's a guy that can is, he said, relationship is big, boot thing. He said the locker room is huge. So if you got somebody like that and you got the, the blessing of a McCoy you learn under, I'm excited about a, a hill now. I am. I'm not trying to throw him away like that. I'm not saying, oh, bye, get rid of him. He's a bust. Why? We've seen, ten, we've seen tons of players come in the NFL who are not mentally mature and ready mentally. We've seen it. But they have all world talent. We always say, man, if they could just get that mind right, if they could just get that mind right. Well, I look, I look at the, 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 the culture that they're trying to create in the locker room, and I don't think it was a bad cultural locker room under Garrett. I think Garrett was good in that as, aspect. But I think it's a little different with Mike McCarthy. I think he's just more of a mm, tough guy, in my opinion. I kind of like that. I'm sorry. And I just feel like, you know, the, I think the, the, the locker room is going to respond to it, and I feel like Tristan Hill can really benefit from it. But let's look at a couple things. This is a highlight from when he got drafted or why the Cowboys were liking him. And then I'm going to show you a couple plays that I liked was like, you know what, you can get excited about the kid. So this is what the initial thing that the Cowboys were saying, blogging the boys, were saying when they drafted a Tristan Hill. You were excited because of that first step. Don't just throw this kid away, damn it. It was a bit surprising when the Dallas Cowboys selected Tristan Hill with their first pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. But a closer look at Hill's film reveals how he is ideally suited for this Dallas Cowboys defense. Hill is extremely quick off the ball, which is a quality that the Cowboys value in their defensive linemen. But perhaps more important is how his quickness allows him to be an effective stunter. The first clip we'll look at is against Temple in the 2018 season. Hill is lined up in the B gap to the defense's right. And he did this a few times in, in some games. And he held, his, held the point of attack, especially in the Chicago game. It wasn't a lot, the but Hill stunts inside, new coaching staff, new chances, rebirth. He's so quick that by the time the guard is able to put his hands on him, he is already penetrating the gap. He lowers his right shoulder. Which is nearest to the we can get that in the game. You see that right there? We can get that in the game. Splitting that gap, that's what they wanted from him. Getting on that guard right quick, playing that three tech role. You got a 315 pound guy, a full year of hopefully getting stronger. You get the dedication. If you get the Tom Sula bringing the, the best out of him, I'm not throwing a kid like that away. I'm getting more excited. Like, if you keep him and you bring the best out of him, if you get a coaching staff that cares and loves him and says, look, let's bring the best out of you and make you great. Man, is that not a bonus? You got a Gerald McCoy, and then you got a Hill coming behind him. What if McCoy gets hurt? That's a good guy to come right behind him, especially if his mind is right. When the guard gets his hands on him, and the guard is basically pushing him right along now. Now, this time it's not a pass, but a running play, a quarterback iso. So this is a designed run play for the quarterback. The quarterback is trying to move to the defense's right on the ISO following the lead block from the tailback. But now Hill is penetrated and there's nobody between him and the quarterback. And he is able to make the tackle in the backfield. No, Hill's quickness and him, ability to stop so from one like, gap oh, into another bus, makes look, him ideally suited for this Dallas else. Cowboys defense. And he's going to have a very good career with the Cowboys. Who? Oh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. All right. So here's a couple of plays that I I liked, um, and he didn't have a lot because he didn't get a lot of snaps. But so what? That was last year. It's a whole new staff. I like Tom Tom Sula. He's a grunt. He's that he's that grunt guy. He's that dude that <laughs> I just like Tom Sula. And I think Tom Sula can get him right. And we still have Leon Lett. And Leon Lett was staying behind him, working after after practice with him and things of that nature. Don't just forget about that. So here, let's get in here right quick.
All right, I'm sure y'all may have seen this, but this was the Chicago game last year. And it was just a couple back-to-back plays that if you can bring this out of him more, this gets you excited. Um, This play right here, let's get it for us. I think the thing I really want to see is his trailing of the of the running back right here. Here is he starts out. Let's see, let me get y'all up to speed with it. Hey ho, forty three flex with the two dollar holla. I just gave you the flex pose too, just to let you know. All right, so we got him under tackle, playing the one tech actually, which is good because you come in at a three, but you can play a one, and you like that. Now his problem is he's probably not going to be good at taking on double teams. Now, we don't know if he's got bigger or stronger, but we don't. But right here, he's not going to be good at taking the double teams. But we like how he holds the point of attack after he comes off the ball. And I like the pursuit of the ball carrier because he can trail down the line and he doesn't give up on plays, as we will fast forward right here. Slides over. Now, watch how he comes off off that line of scrimmage, trails down, and I put it in slow motion. But watch how he trails that running back the whole way. He doesn't give up on the play. You get what I'm saying? That dude is almost down, what, 10, 11 yards down the field? I like that. That's one thing I like about Hill. He doesn't give up on the plays. He will pursue you all the way down. Let's watch it in uh, fast motion. Sliding down the line, doesn't give up on the play. That's a 300-pound guy. I like that. Now, on the next play, I like even better because he actually makes the tackle. Now, he actually is uh, playing the one tech, stands the man up, makes the tackle. Now, we didn't get a lot of that from Lee Collins because he was more of a rush guy. You'll see it right here, but we'll show it from the backside. But he makes the tackle right here, stands up. Let me see if it's just the guard of the tackle. Stands him up, holds him at the point of attack as you see him looking in there, getting gritty. I like that. Get in there and get gritty. Uh, Get in there and get gritty, Hill. Get in there and get gritty, Hill. Get in there and get gritty, Hill. I like that. See him, boo thing? He in there getting gritty. Good play. I like that. Let's show that again. Look at him holding up the point of attack. We're going to hit it in slow motion. I like that. I like how he holds the point of attack and makes that tackle right over the guard right here. That's what I want my guy to do. He shows some strength right here. That's what you want to see. He shows some strength right there. That's what I want to see. Those plays kind of get me excited like, okay, well, we've seen it. Okay. All right. Okay, Hill. That's what I want to see. I want to see that. I want to see that next year. I want to see that this year. I want to see if the coaching staff doesn't get rid of him. I want to see if the coaching staff says we're going to keep you and we're not going to trade you or anything like that or, or something, and we bring you back and we say, you know what? Get your mind right. We need you. He is going to be an asset to the team. I like that first step. I like that quickness. I like how he held that guard up at the point of attack and made that tackle. Hey, ho, we got young Wilson with the 499 holler. What's up, BGJ? I think Hill will surprise people this year. He's he's young and dumb to get it. He was being held back by Marinelli. Yeah. Like I said, immaturity. That was his biggest issue, immaturity. But you can get that together, babe. People grow up. We uh, Haven't we been immature in life? Are we going to say we had all the answers if we were going to school and went out of college? I know when I was 21, I was dumb as hell. I wasn't dumb, but I was wild as hell. You get what I'm saying? And so you got to understand he was already having the immaturity issues. Then you go to the NFL, you don't really have any mentorship to your, to your rookie year. Nobody's really maybe putting taking you under the wings in the good way. You're, you're starting to form bad habits, right? You start forming bad habits. You start getting late. You start maybe maybe you're doing stuff, staying out later. You're not reading the playbook because you're not getting no plays right. You're not activated in games, so now you lose interest. Those things happen. Not saying it's acceptable, but those things happen, okay? And guess what? That's why they wanted to change a few things, especially with the defensive line, because let's not forget, okay, under Rod Marinelli, let's not forget under Rod Marinelli, there was talk, uh, Tank Lawrence suspension. 
Greg Hardy suspension. Um, uh, Ross got caught up. Antoine Woods got caught up. I'm a, I'm not really trying to throw Randy Gregory in there, but he still had the substance abuse. That's him. All the people that had the issues on the team that were getting in trouble were on the defensive line under Rod Marinelli. Is that just by chance, y'all? I don't know. Yes, he's a great coach. Yes, he's been in the fire and did those things, but that's just very peculiar to me that a lot of the suspensions had on the defensive, weren't on the offensive line. We know about Zeke, but we, for the most part, the problems were on the defensive line getting in trouble and the suspensions. So I think this guy, Tom Sula, and I think this staff can mold him and get him right, and we're going to need him because that is like a free player for us. And he was a second-round pick. You want him to succeed. You don't want him to fail. You want him to succeed. I'm going to show a couple other plays right here, and this is in this Buffalo game where he makes another good play standing up the guy at the point of attack. Now, the play before I'm going to show, he gets shook up. He gets he loses the misdirection because he goes with the ball carry and Josh Allen holds the ball, but he pretty much faked the whole team out except Sean Lee. But he kind of recognized that at the end, but I still like how he crashed down on the line and was going to be there for the play. But the next play comes in and makes another good play. So I like potential about him, and I think it can be brought the hell out. Now, like I said, he gets shook up a little bit on this play. Here he is playing the one again. Now, you watch this play right here. Good point of attack, good push off the ball. And I, throw, I threw it, and he actually threw the man off of him. Good push and good strength right here. Holds the point of attack. Gets hit back a little bit, but throws the man off of him. Now, he loses it because Josh Allen does the play fake, but I do like the strength that he just showed right there. Now, he did lose the man. That's not good uh, because Josh Allen did the fake, but a lot of people did go after the fake as well. All right, but let me show this play right here. He makes a good play on, I believe, Singletary, that rookie, uh, rookie running back. And right here, playing the one tech again under center. So you can see he's versatile. He can play multiple positions for you along the line. But watch this. I'm going to hit this one in slow motion. Does the same thing that he did in the Bears game. Gets his arms out quick because you don't want to have short arms. You want to get the arms out long so you can pull that jersey down, pull and rip. But look how he sheds the block, crashes down the line, Makes the tackle, makes the solo tackle. Now, we know he's not the biggest running back, but I do like the fact that he makes the tackle, makes the play, does the job. So, for me, I'm excited about a Tristan Hill still. I'm not throwing him away. So, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to call him a dead man walking. He could be but that's up to him if he's a dead man walking. I believe it's up to Tristan Hill if he wants to be a dead man walking with the staff. I believe Tristan Hill needs to look in the mirror and say, guess what, do I want to be a great NFL player? Do I want to be somebody great? I'm with the Dallas Cowboys. I'm with the team that I could be really good and and make good money and people who could worship, not even something like that, but – he has to look in the mirror and say, I want to do this. I believe if he looks himself in the mirror and says, I'm going to grow up and do this, the ability will come out. I believe Tom Sula can develop. I think he will be a huge asset coming in year two. Let's not throw this kid away because I've heard so many people trust and believe when I even posted this dead man walking saying that he's a buzz, get rid of him, uh, trade him, this and that. I get it. Like I said before, I'm not tripping off of a trade, but I am also going to say – I'd rather you bring him back 
for the depth. You draft him in the second round. Let's develop him. He has talent. Get that defensive line rotation even nastier and let this defense get dominant into the way it was looking in 2018 when it was looking full throttle. It took a step back last year. We needed to get it back where it was. And it's a step in the right direction when you got a Poe and you got a Gerald McCoy. And I believe if you keep a Hill and you develop him and you let a Tom Sula really develop him, if you have a Rob Davis who can really speak to him mentally, if you have a Gerald McCoy who can be a good mentor to him, then I really believe that, and Tristan Hill says he wants to do it as well, I think you have a gem. I think you do. And I don't think you just say, oh, man, Tristan Hill's whack. I don't believe that, and I don't want to just get rid of him. So we obviously – no, it would be a, a failing grade for what he did this year. But I'm going to ask y'all, what would be your grade projection? If you – let's say he gets the coaching, what would you say would be a good projection for him? For me, I'm going to say a B projection because I still like his talent. And I believe you can come overcome maturity issues, especially if you get coaches that care about you. Um, I'm not saying Ron Marinelli didn't care about him, but I don't know if the – the coaching and the players with the stress that they had of the Super Bowl or a bust. Maybe that's another reason why we didn't see Tristan Hill and these rookies. When we talked about why didn't you see a Donovan uh, Wilson, when you talked about you didn't see a Devin Smith, when you talk about you didn't see these other players playing, it was a lot of stress. We've seen the interviews. I played the interview with Kayvon Frazier. We played the interview with George Ioka. It was a lot of stress on this team of Super Bowl or bust. So maybe that's why you didn't see a Hill as well. That's why you didn't see a Donovan Wilson. You didn't see none of these guys because they were like, we need to go with what we know so we can get into a damn Super Bowl and, and get past is to keep our jobs now you don't have that now you have a second chance and this world and this country is about second chance look who's on the team right now randy gregory how many chances he done had he done had a lot now you have alden smith who hasn't played football in four years right jerry jones is all about second chances so tristan hill turn on this youtube channel turn on silver and blue nation turn on big game james and look me in the eye when i talk to you right now it's up to you dog it's up to you. You can be really good in this program. Bring it. Bring that energy that we want to see, that I want to see, because you can make this defensive line so much damn better. I'm not throwing away six foot three, 300, probably 15 pounds now. No, I like it. Giving them B's and C's? Who? Let me see who it's on. I'm going to go through them. Boothang gives him a B. B. Parker gives him a B. Rue Glock gives him a B minus. I think he's a year behind. KMT72 says that. <laughs> Ready, red, silly. Who else gave him a good guy? Yeah. Yeah, mostly B's and C's. Yeah, I just think uh, I think there's a, it's the orange arrow can be pointing up for him uh, with this new staff, and, and that's why I don't want to throw him away. So um, I'm excited about uh, what he can bring to the table. The draft is coming. Dallas Cowboys don't have to reach. They got a defensive tackle. They got one still back coming back in the fold, and they can be a luxury and get somebody even later. And but they could still get the one tech, but. Uh, or get a three later on, but they don't have to force to reach because this is a guy that I believe has potential to be good in this rotation and this program. And even though they signed a Gerald McCoy to a three-year deal, um, injuries and age can can you can you can downtrend very quickly. And uh, why wouldn't you want to have a good backup who's young and uh, ha is explosive? And you've seen that quick explosive first step. So I'm 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 gonna go with a a, a low B because I'm still skeptical about the maturity, and it's only the maturity, in my opinion. I think that's the only thing. You get the maturity together, you're going to have a really good player, period. So, appreciate everybody for tuning in. What?
Oh, Fred White. What is Fred White? Who is Fred White? Is he? Are you an Eagles fan? Is he an Eagles fan? Uh, hey, I don't mind you Eagles fans. Oh, give me some. Let's give me some questions before I head out here. I'm sorry, I was gonna have the line open. I've been, you know, everybody and their mama got the line open. I just be forgetting, and I apologize. I'm gonna hook that thing up so you guys can call in and we can talk. But y'all got any quick questions? Oh. One more thing before we get off of here. Jeff Gladney, I believe, and A.J. Terrell from Clemson had visits. I don't know if they had the virtual visits, but my guy, Jeff Gladney from TCU, I'm excited about that because I like Jeff Gladney. Me and Skywalker still did a video. Make sure you check that out a couple of days ago about uh, the breakdown of everybody who's basically had the virtual drafts. Um, it was a real good video. Make sure you check it out. But bringing in Jeff Gladney from TCU, I'm feeling that. Um the only thing that really hurts, to, honestly, Jeff Gladney is something that hurt Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis is 5'10", 190 pounds, and, you know, he can get overpowered by bigger receivers. But if you're talking about coverability, if you're talking about stickiness, if you're talking about a guy who stays on that ass, that's a Jeff Gladney. And if he was the size of a um, Henderson uh, from Florida, He'd definitely be higher. And he, I mean, he's a top 40, top 50 pick right now. He'd definitely be higher if he had like a Henderson measurables. But I'm excited that they talked to him. I think he could be definitely an asset. Hey, ho, I got pick and pop with a $3 holler. And they got the fist bump. Let me give you that. Bink it, bink it. I gave you the fist bump back. I like that. Appreciate the fist bump. But excited about Jeff Gladney. What are y'all thoughts about Jeff Gladney? Y'all like Jeff Gladney? Has anybody seen him? What are your thoughts? I've been saying if the Cowboys snatch him, because this is how I think the Cowboys will draft. We'll go through our mock draft, and that, that mock draft, I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all ain't with us on that mock draft, y'all tripping. That mock draft, Skywalker's already been sending me some of the stuff. Me, Law Nation, Skywalker, still going to do a day. We're going to do a draft show. The day of the draft, we're going to do a mock before with you guys, and then we're going to do a day of – but that draft show is going to be fire. He already sent me some stuff, man. That Man, yeah, yeah, man. I'm trying to tell you, if y'all anywhere else, shame on you. Shame on a nigga who tried to play games on a – shame on y'all if y'all do that because that's going to be fire. But what are your thoughts? See, I'm thinking that the Cowboys, if you're looking at the draft, they're going to draft two corners like they did in 2017. That's my opinion. I think they're going to draft two corners. Um, I think they get a safety, or two corners, a safety. I think they get a defensive end, an offensive lineman, and a receiver. I don't think they get a tight end. I think they get a receiver. Um, I think they get a couple corners, a DN, an offensive guard, and maybe a D tackle. Yeah, give me your thoughts. I didn't get to hear everybody. What are your thoughts on Gladney? Just Gladney just visit AJ Terrell uh, Clemson. I haven't seen a lot of uh, tape on Terrell. Good and long corner. Sticky, but I need to watch more of him, so I can't front. But that will be all ready by the time draft draft time comes. But what are your thoughts on Gladney? Once again, I'm sorry. And then um, A.J. Terrell. What do you think about those two guys they just brought in? Yeah, I'm waiting on Fred, too. Yeah, Dre the Great. Now, I hear what you're saying about Henderson. That was the That's the only thing. If you've been hearing me about Henderson from A1 day when I've been saying his tackling is something that's a concern. But once, just like hands, I think he makes more decisions where he should, but he doesn't. I don't think he's a, a, a habitually bad tackler. He, I, I think he just sometimes doesn't want to stick his nose in there, but I think he can. But he's a nasty cover corner, and I think he could almost. I think he could be a day one starter with Dallas if they draft him. Um, I think they can get that tackling together. That that worries me at a cornerback position at seventeen. But the talent, the talent, the talent is there, um, and I think Gladney is right there, man. That dude can cover, man. Go watch his tape, man. That dude can cover. John asked me, would I have been happier if we drafted a safety over last year over Hill? Hell, yeah. I mean, we had Thornhill out there. We had uh, Taylor Rapp that was out there. We saw what Thornhill did with the Chiefs. I believe he tore his Achilles. Not good. Uh, but we saw what those safeties did. They had very impressive rookie years. But I'm not going to say I was would have took – it It was either or with me. I wasn't mad at the Hill pick. 
I pick, projected them to pick them. I wasn't mad at the Hill pick uh, because I knew they did need help on the defensive front. Um, so it was either or thing. I think more people were out on Hill because he had the immaturity issues and people always been talking about safety and then they seen what Thorin Hill and Rat both did with the Rams, I mean the uh, Chiefs and Rams respectively. But Hill could still turn out to be a very good player once again. So I'm okay. Young Wilson, you say Gladney's good, but where? Like I said, I I said if Gladney is at 51, I wouldn't mind Gladney at 51. If you don't get like a Henderson, if Henderson doesn't fall at 17 for you, I'm cool with definitely getting Gladney at, at, at your second-round pick. I'm not getting Gladney at 17, but I'm definitely good with getting Gladney at 51. Um, and you can get um, – you know, Chasen has been the name that's been really been floating around, um, and his tape is very good. And like you said, if you watch, he came on more than so the end of the year – but his potential, that body type, has you salivating of what you can do with him in that lineup, especially with the guys you currently have on the team right now. So I think that if you went like a chasing, because I think he's one of the top as far as effective uh, potential defensive ends in the, the draft, especially in the first round, and then he came back, like I said, with a Gladney, and then you scooped up a receiver, you could get a nice receiver later. You could still get one. Um, if you got a receiver in the first, but it have to be one of them dogs if you're doing that to me. But I like Gladney in the second. I don't know if he lasts to the third now. And my, my, my homie, Patrick Walker, Patrick No C. Walker says, you know, they're going to scoop up Terrell. I mean, Diggs might be the pick at 17. I don't know. I mean, Diggs is a same, you know, I don't know. I'm more Larry of Diggs. I, he, he's good, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling him like I'm feeling those other guys. I also like Dantzler, but he's a little, little light in the pants. He's only like 185 pounds, you know. So there, there's there's some there's some guys, but, you know, Terrell's got that good size. A.J. Terrell's got that good size from Clemson. I, I, I You know, I'm not opposed to because, like I said, Gladney's 5'10", but I think I, ultimately I think you want your starting corners around that six foot and above because of what they're going to deal with unless you got just one of them dog-type corners. I think Jordan Lewis can fit in that, but as I said about Jordan Lewis, and he's been my dog from day one, he's still smallish, and you will get, be able to get plays on him. Dreaded great. I like Jalen Johnson from Utah as well. We saw him at the combine, fluid, very good size, press corner, can play all the positions, press off man. I, I like Jalen Johnson, too. I think he's grabbed and pulled up steam. He's got the length. He's got the, the weight, the size measurables. I think he's going to make a team good as well. And, you know, they've already inter interviewed uh, Fulton. I, I don't know what to think about Fulton. Fulton's okay, but I feel like he gets down and you can get at him mentally. I don't know. And it's not the Morris Claiborne thing with me. I just don't have a good feeling about Fulton for some reason. I could be totally wrong, but eh, definitely not at 17. Um, if they want to get him later, cool, but don't get him at no 17. That's just don't do that. Yes, Drader Great. I believe the Cowboys are going to get two uh, cornerbacks in this draft. But, hey, I'm about to head off here. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for everybody tuning in. <clears throat> Today is Sunday. Next up, make sure you tune in. But my thoughts on Hill, hey, new staff, new beginnings. Say that with me. New staff, new beginnings. New staff, new beginnings. That's what we want to say. New staff, new beginnings. And guess what? The Hill, the the I like Hill, and let's just not throw him away. And I don't want him to be him. I want him to be a dead man walker. I want him to be a guy that can flourish in this new with this new staff and bring the best out of him. This is a team, and this is an owner of second chances. We haven't even seen anything out of Hill yet, and you got a whole new staff that can. And Tom Sula is good along that defensive line. He's got mentorship now. I like the Rob Davis hire. I think they can help him mentally, and I I, I like Hill. And I, I the arrows pointing up. So, next up is going to be Donovan Wilson. Talked about Jalen Jokes. I think, you know, 
He's got a lot of potential. Um, I don't know if he makes that roster. We'll see what position they put him in. Is he a linebacker? Is he a defensive end? But, you know, with that size, you can work with him. But the good thing about that is the practice squad is unlimited now, so you can stay on there as long as you want. So that's somebody that can develop. But we talked about Tristan Hill. Let's bring the best out of him. And then next up, we talk about Donovan Wilson. We want to see Donovan Wilson. Everybody's talking about Grant Delpit, Xavier McKinney, Jeremy Chin, um, 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 uh, the kid from Lenore. Um, so – but don't forget about Donovan Wilson. He's got uh, uh, Linquist back there with him. We can see. So next up, Donovan Wilson. We'll have a good time talking about him. So I appreciate y'all. Happy Easter to everybody. Didn't feel like no damn Easter, but it is one. Shout out to my son out there for his birthday. Um, I holla at you. We already talked. I love you, and I love everybody. Shout out to everybody who donated today um, for the nation. Oh. Damn it, before we get off of here, shout out to everybody who got a 3K in this bitch. Y'all got a 3K. Man, probably, I hope my people's peoples are still in here. Oh, yeah, Winfield, too. I'm sorry. Shout out to y'all for getting it to three motherfucking K. And we ain't stopping yet. We ain't stopping yet. We ain't stopping yet. I sat there, and it got to 3K, and I wasn't even on air. Y'all are the freaking man. I was just sitting there, ass boot thing. I was just sitting there flex posing, just like, yeah, that's my peoples. I said, let's get it to 3K, and they got it there. Now, let's get it. I said 4K, but I wanted five before this damn season over, and then 10, and then 20, and then 30, and then 40, and then 50, and then 80, and then 100. You feel me? That's why we want to get this shit popping. And it can, but it's going to be y'all. So I, I just want to tell you I'm super excited. Man, I took over these ones and twos in last April. Last April, and I'm going to say it, had 1,722 subscribers. April 7th, boo thing. April 7th, 2019, 1,722 subscribers. And now April 12th, 2020, we had three. Oh, two. Hey, ho, I got a pick and pop with a $5 holler giving me the good dance, and I'm dancing with you. So it's, it's you guys, y'all. That is y'all, man. Babe, that is y'all. Like, that's me, too. That's me, too. A little me, too, now. <laughs> a little me, too. But, man, that is y'all. We, we di, di, Man, I'm excited, man. April, a year, right? Right? 1,300 subscribers in a year. Y'all are freaking amazing, man. Let's keep on pushing this shit higher, man. Let's keep on pushing this thing higher, man. Let's get this thing great. I told you, I want to be on the radio, meet Law, Skywalker Still. We want to make this thing on, was it Cyrus or, or what is it, iHeart Radio? One of them, we want to get this shit syndicated, and it can. But it's going to be y'all. Y'all got to keep pressing that like button. Y'all got to keep pressing that share button. Y'all got to keep pressing that subscribe button. Y'all got to keep making this thing great because I'm telling you, we're getting it together so we can go push it to these networks. Real deal. Like, real talk. We're going to get this shit popping, man. But it's going to be y'all. So keep on pushing the product. Like the F out of this. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Ready Red. I appreciate you. And you have been. Ryan Humphrey, my dog. He been. Let me give shout outs to my peoples out here. Ryan Humphrey been banging it. Keeping Silver and Blue alive. You know, I told him it was going to be tough for me to be able to post on that pan, uh, page all the time. And he came through. Shout out to my guy, Jamie O'Dell, who stay with that fire network. Uh, Stevie Mac 23, come with that news too. And just everybody who's been in the feed. Like I said, Ready Red, Quest Cowboys. Um, looking crazy, 43 Flex, uh, Stephen Arthur, um, so many, Juwan James, um, Marvin Hargrove, um, 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 so Muggs Maxwell. I mean, I I, I can't, and please if I forget names because it's so many of y'all. This is so many of y'all. John Jones, uh, 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 Andrew Rodriguez, you know he been there forever. Ron Smith been there. Who? K Swagger 33. Who else, babe? Mercedes Benz BMW. Who else? Juan James. John Jones. Who else we got? Bobby M. The Lunatic. So many of y'all, man. 
Rue Glock. I love that name. Rue Glock. What up, boss? Gambino. Ja. Hulk. Hulk Logan been coming in. He coming in 20 different names. I can't never figure him out. He come in 20 different names. You're like, I'm I'm blah, blah, blah. It's, it's Hope. I'm like, okay. You got a new name? Young Wilson? Young Wilson, KMT72? I know. I just want to give y'all shout-outs before I get off here. I'm shouting out all y'all. All y'all must suckers right now. Give me some more names, baby. Who else? God damn, so many damn names. Sheila Neal. Oh, Sheila Tyrone. Just call on Tyrone. It's your boy D. White. Man, y'all don't understand how much I love y'all. Like, I love this shit. I love this shit. Like, I love it. I love just mentioning all the names. Katina, she, Katina been down from the day one. She the A1 day one. Yeah, that's special K. Katina A1 day one. Yeah, you could put Claypool at a flex tight end. I just want to give y'all a shout out, man. I'm about to get off here, man. But Andrew, you have to jump on that next show because uh, late night hype. You know that's going down Tuesday. Make sure y'all get the hell up in there because we're really promoting that tomorrow. I may do Donovan Wilson. I don't know. Uh, I may do a show. Boss is in here. With me and Boss gonna talk out there because we're gonna get a show popping too. And then I got another cat um, from Canada. And we're gonna get a show uh, banging this week. So make sure you check out the show. May- maybe me and Boss will. I'll, me and Boss will talk, but maybe me and Boss just talk about Donovan Wilson. How would y'all like that? Oh, yes, Ryan. You tell him, Ryan. You be doing the damn Twitter. You tell him. Check out Ryan. He does our Twitter on Silver and Blue Nation. Get, get on that Twitter. Get on my Big Game James page, too. Shit. Share the hell out of that. Uh, Instagram, Silver and Blue Nation, IG. Twitter, Silver and Blue Nation. Um, obviously, y'all see the YouTube, Facebook. But go to the YouTube, uh, our, the Big Game James page. Like and share the hell out of that. All that good stuff, man, right? Just like and share. Like, share, donate. Because, hey, got to make that great, too. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Talk to y'all soon. But. I said, me and Boss might do something tomorrow with Donovan Wilson. We'll see. I'm going to talk to Boss here in a minute. But shout out to all y'all. Love y'all. Love, peace, and hair grease. Stay safe. Hopefully this COVID-19 will be done. We'll be out of this, and we'll get to football and be normalcy. Make sure to wash your hands. Be safe. And, uh, you know, tell your loved ones you love them. All right? I'm out. Deuces.